My presentation will be the not last one, because after me there is an uh, invited speaker, self-invited speaker, right? No, it's a friend of us, actually, and uh, most of you probably know him, but I'll give him the words in a few minutes. I'll try to go fast from my presentation. Uh, actually, it has not uh, anything to do with Cambada specifically, it has to do with the middle size league. And something that uh, we have uh, proposed last year to the RoboCup Federation for some funding. So this work has been partially funded by the RoboCup Federation. And uh, so I'll, uh, and basically why I'm presenting this uh, this afternoon is because we are hoping that tomorrow we can use this tool and start moving on in order to take some advantage of it, namely during the next competitions. So basically, um, this is basically the summary of what I'm going to, to show. The motivation was that, uh, as you know, rules basically change every year, sometimes a bit, sometimes a lot. It depends uh, on the challenges at the moment. Uh, we have been using a, a referee box that has been stable for a lot of years now, but that in some aspects has not evolved uh, together with the rules. And, uh, at a certain point, uh, we, feel, we felt that uh, it would be important that the ref box could uh, include the new possibilities and uh, the new targets that we're aiming at this point in the, in the roadmap of the middle size lead. Uh, need, for instance, for inter-team cooperation is one of the needs that's been emerging. Last year, we have done a very interesting work in Eindhoven during the hands-on uh, day, putting uh, a lot of teams uh, sharing their uh, world state vision and showing that world state in different uh, base stations. Also, we'd like to have requirements for bet better debugging tools, information that we can get from both of the teams that are playing at the end, let's say, not during the game. The, during the game here means that you are acquiring information during the game and then you can actually provide that information afterwards for debugging or for benchmarking. More realistic information for the audience. I think that that's one of the problems of the league. Uh, we have uh, not only to explain what is going on, but we have to also provide some information for the audience to see what the robots see. So we can explain what is happening, but it's harder for the audience to understand what the robots can actually perceive around them. Uh, more effective benchmarking tools, I think they are more and more important over the time. Also, uh, taking all these, these uh, uh, basic motivation that I presented. The objectives that we have proposed was to create a new uh, platform independent uh, application, a ref box basically, written in Java. This has nothing to do against C++ or whatever. It's basically to be uh, platform independent and uh, the trustees last year uh, appreciated that, I guess. Uh, Support for fast action modes with interlock capabilities. This means that we want to prevent more human, prevent as much as possible human errors uh, actuating upon the ref box. Uh, extension of the currently used protocol. This actually makes sound a little bit strange because we only implemented the old protocol and uh, not the XML uh, uh, version, but it's actually rather easy to implement also the XML, but extension in the sense that we want to introduce uh, other type, uh, types of information to provide to the, to the base stations and also to get from the base stations. Extensive log data, not only from the game itself, but also from the teams. Easy configuration as much as possible. Remote audience uh, and field referee data show. Ready for voice interface for human coaching. That is something that is already on the rules, but it's not been possible until now because there is no support for that. A gathering of all the both teams world model and a fully configurable and open source in the sense that all the community can work upon this and develop uh, new solutions. In terms of the basic architecture that has been proposed and has been evolving, so this is not static in the, in the current sense, that, let me see. Yeah, okay. Uh, basically, sorry. Basically, what we have is a central state machine together with a control graphical interface. This is what the current uh, uh, ref box uses together with the communication model, uh, which is wired to both teams' base stations. 
so this is uh, the, the current uh, solution. What we wanted to add is to have the possibility of having clients to this central machine, to the ref box, that can either present the information it has upon the game and upon information from the, the teams in different formats and different visualization modes, and also clients that can provide input either to the teams or to the ref box itself uh, through different means. For instance, using voice or using any kind of device. Probably some of you remember uh, the device I presented two years ago uh, for, for the referee. Okay, now we have that integrated into this ref, ref box. Okay, uh, all the information is to be stored and then uh, the idea is also some, somewhere in the future, not now, to have the possibility to input ground truth data uh, to the system so that we can actually have uh, some uh, form of benchmarking uh, regarding the results we get from our team and from the opponent team. So uh, if you now look into what is the base uh, of this new ref box, please do not be too critical regarding the graphical aspects, okay? This is not the main point. You can suggest anything you want regarding that aspect and you can change it. But the idea was, was to divide the area, it's a little bit dark, but uh, never, never worry, divide this in several areas, which are quite distinct from each other, so that the number of mistakes from human errors from the referee, uh, the, the, referee the ref box referee, uh, will do when uh, acting upon um, this situation. So this is a pre-game situation. This is the time elapsed. Now we'll have here also the actual game time, means that the, uh, the referee has not only the running time, but actu actually the play on time. Uh, and this is an extra information for uh, evaluating the performance of the teams during the game. And this is also a tip for the referee for how long it should extend the halves of the game, for instance. Okay? Uh, don't be shocked with the next image. It's a little bit colorful. It's, it's on purpose, let's say. And uh, basically, so on top you have the, the team names. Now, with this ref box, basically, when you connect to the ref box, it automatically pops up your name because it has uh, the list, the, the, the IP addresses are assigned to the teams, which means that it's possible to, to input directly the name of the teams and present them there. Uh, at the center, you have information about the current game status, current store, game time. This is the, the actual played game, let's say. On the left and right side, are those commands uh, which are somehow commands and information which are uh, related to each of the teams. So basically these are the commands for each time of uh, free kicks, kickoffs, free kicks, goal kicks, throw-ins, corners, penalties. Also uh, for the goals, repairs and uh, yellow and red cards. The red card hopefully is never to be used but you never know. <laughs> But uh, as you probably uh, have noticed, we have been pushing towards being more proactive, showing the yellow cards. And so the possibility of actually having at least double yellow cards is now much more common. Uh, in, the in the bottom, you have some uh, miscellaneous information, event history, and some team counters, which is basically something just to check if everything has been going OK. And now you just forget about, with the new rules, just forget about uh, robot numbers. You know that a team can have a match five robots, so these circles will represent your team. It doesn't matter if this is the goalkeeper of that one. So there is no relation between the numbers and uh, the robots. So just show in a very fast way, this would be a situation for, this is pre-game still, so th this will be a kickoff for EMA, the start is ready to be pressed. You can always press stop, so stop is always active for, by default, which means that you can always stop whenever you want. The reset will reset the, the base station, base station, sorry, the, the ref box. Uh, this is a normal play-on situation. In play-on situation, the only thing you can do is stop the game. Nothing else can be done. This is a situation uh, where you have uh, indication that you are in the first half, you are in the stop uh, game uh, position, you have, this is actually not, I don't like this, we are going to change this. <laughs> this is a one, not a seven. 
129, the actually play time would be 114 seconds, okay? In the center, you can have the common commands, which are drop ball, park, of course, you can only have park after ending the each off or the game, and part, and on the sides, you have the uh, types of restart that you can use. Also, the yellow and red cards, the goals. Any problem? No. Okay. So this is an example where, for instance, the team A, Cyan, will have a yellow. Okay, so this is, uh, notice there, this is the first yellow card, not the second one. And the second team, Team Magenta, has a player that is being taken out for repair. So the timer is over there. As, and as I sh I'll show you afterwards, it is, it is also available for the main referee. And uh, basically, if you take another one before this one reaches zero, both of them will start by 30 seconds again. A thing that uh, is slightly different, of course, you can change that if you want. I am no longer with the XX, but if you want, it's, it's not clear in the rules if this time is actually counting during the stoppage time or not, okay? So it's something that you have, you can decide. You know, it changes, <laughs> okay. In this situation, for instance, you still have one uh, player out for repair, and this unfortunate guy had got the second yellow, and now he's 90 sec 98 seconds away for getting in to the game, and uh, knowing that these 98 seconds does not include half times. So the, it stopped during half time. Okay. Uh, Another thing that was not supported by previous uh, ref box is uh, overtime. Now, uh, after ending the second half, you can choose for a kickoff, and if you select a kickoff, you enter in overtime. And now you have a first and second half overtime. That will normally be more five minutes, okay? So uh, when you come to the semifinals and finals, and you get in this situation, it would be a draw, 2-2 then you can have a, an overtime. And after that, if it's still a draw, you went into penalty mode. Okay, so this is all integrated in, into this solution. Uh, one of the things here with this, this, well, this is based on the, the old protocol, as I said, but we also introduced the, a new command for asking teams for this current world state. So it is requested on a periodic base. Uh, this is based on the document at which has been produced and uh, the interface is based on a JSON structure. And one of the things that we'd like to invite you tomorrow is to discuss the structure, what you'd like to put there. Of course, it's not fixed in the sense you can uh, add up some extra information if you want, but at least there is a minimum amount of information that should be there. This information is then relayed to local storage and to the audience data show. Uh, also, the information regarding all the states of the game is stored, which means that after the game, this information is deployed to both teams, and you get uh, uh, an historic uh, view of everything that went on through the game, not only from your point of view, but also from the point of view of the other teams. Okay, sorry. Uh, relating to the audience data show graphical interface and also to the referee box, since this is based on the concept of um, no, sorry. Producer-consumer solution, basically. This will be a client of the ref box and will receive inf uh, the information re regarding the, the game and the information from the teams. So one possible view, which is implemented and we can test tomorrow, of the audience data show would be something like this. Okay, it must, it's not necessarily this, but it actually is working. Uh, the teams can in, uh, can also provide the form of their robots if they want in an XML file. No, Jason. OBJ. OBJ. Okay. An OBJ form, which means that you can have your robots designed and, in, and put it into into this uh, solution. There is something that we have been discussing about using only three letters for each team. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like the solution, but uh, somehow this is based on the the standard that we see on FIFA games, right? So. Huh? Pro Evolution Soccer. Pro Evolution Soccer, okay. Pro Evolution Soccer. Result, time of game, and what the teams say that they are seeing at that moment, okay? We, at this point, decided, and it's something that's open for discussion, that we should not show the obstacles that each team sees to the audience, because it would be too confused. And we also have to decide that 
maybe we'll be showing two balls, one for each team, but you have to decide what is, if you have more than one possible solution for the ball, what is the, the one that you want to show. Okay, this is open for discussion. Of course, you can also show the, ref, the, 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 the audience what is, for instance, if there's a kickoff combater, this will uh, appear as a, how do you call it? Sliding yes, a sliding animation, okay. Kickoff combater, and goes down again, and then the, the robots will move, okay, and there will be a whistle and a game on, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, uh, for instance, again, this is not necessarily the, the outcome, but if you have this, uh, this display uh, on uh, near the ref box and looking towards the field, the referee can have all the important information delivered to him. Okay, so we know that the game time is 1.34, effective time is 36 seconds, the current status is first half, last command send was stop, it's here, and the status of team A will be the name of the team of course, Robo, uh, Robot 4 is double yellow and still 97 seconds to go. So those situations that you see today, that is the team leader is asking, referee, can I put number three in? He says, uh, I don't know, okay, just wait another moment. Now you can actually check it here, R0 is out for repair and still waiting. Uh, you still have to wait 18 seconds. When it goes to zero, okay, you can let it in. Okay, those situations hopefully will go away, basically. So regarding future work, and some of, some of it is already being tested, uh, we have already start testing a solution for voice interface for human coaching, according to the rules, which means that uh, we will Hopefully have two microphones using the left and right side of a stereo connection being, uh, being sampled and sent to the, the base stations during, during uh, stoppage time. And uh, for this we will use a different IP address uh, for not getting confused, uh, confusing this data with the data from, from, uh, from the, the red box. And uh, if it's up to the team to use or not to use the voice interface for human coaching, and this will only be delivered during stoppage time. During uh, game on or during the restart, it, it will be blocked. Also, the possibility, if someone's want to work on it, for a voice interface for the main referee, which should be nice if you want to train uh, 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 for, sorry, uh, this, uh, how do you call it? Uh, speech recognition, right? Speech recognition software that can be understood by Chinese, Japanese, uh, German, <laughs> uh, people from, from uh, Portugal, for instance, Spain, Brazil, uh, whatever. It has to be able to understand, but I think that, that also the dictionary is rather s short. So basically what you want to say is start, stop, and maybe the kickoff, uh, goal kick, and uh, the name of uh, magenta and science. So I think it's, it's not impossible to do, and it would be nice to uh, basically removing the ref, uh, the ref box assistant and having the main referee doing all the, all the task, okay? Uh, uh, this is something also for the future. It would be also nice. I already submitted a proposal two years ago for developing a system like this, but it was not funded. At the point, uh, or at the moment, they thought it would not be interesting. I think it would be interesting in the future if you want, actually want to have some sort of benchmarking good benchmarking in MSL, okay? So basically that's it. Tomorrow we'll have a chance to play with this, uh, do some work around it, and uh, we'll see how things go. That's something to discuss tomorrow.